Good morning. Three main themes to our arc this morning. Uh, Jesus is sending out his disciples to prepare the way for him to encounter others. So that's, that's the big first theme, right? He sends us out to prepare others for an encounter with him. That's the main thrust of evangelization. The second big theme today is he gives us some basic instructions, some really key instructions to keep in mind. And then we'll close with a little reflection on uh, the reality of failures and what does it mean for success, right? So preparing the way for encounter with him, some key instructions, failure and success. In case I get lost, you at least know there's an arc to this. <laughs> he will end eventually. Uh, and, you know, God's already spoken. So this is that's, that's like not pressure. God's already spoken to you. How is God speaking to you already through his word and through the liturgy? Right? But like, like the disciples in today's gospel, we're sent to others not just to do good works, the corporal works of mercy, but, uh, but we're authentic witnesses of the love we know in the person of Jesus and the key here is the way we treat others can awaken something in somebody so that they desire to meet the one who sent us. Huh? And that's, a, that's a, a story that God has given me many times uh, in our street ministry. Um, we show up just to affirm the dignity of the person in front of us, to remind people they're loved, that they're worthy of healing in any way they need it, worthy of reconciliation with their loving creator, they're worthy of freedom in any way that they're enslaved. And sometimes the people get really stuck on thinking it's us who are loving them. And the key thing we've learned in our ministry is it's not about us, it's about preparing the way for them to encounter the one who sent us. Huh? So we always defer to a love that's bigger than us all. And so we're never really surprised when people seem to like what's going on, all that affirmation and offer of freedom and healing and reconciliation. Uh, and they'll say, where are you from? Like, who are you? Where are you from? And we used to say, well, we're Catholics. There's a lot of Catholic churches around here. No, no, no. Which one are you from? Which church? Because I want to go there and meet, the, meet who sent you. And again, we used to think that the there they wanted to go was a place but over the years, we found that the there they want to go to, I want to go there, is they want the there of relationship with Christ. And so we simply let them know that that's possible. Call upon the name of the Lord, right? Now, key in all of that is the going. And you're never really ready to go. God sends us when we're not really ready. Uh, just like Father asks you to preach when you're not really ready. But it's about... It's about <laughs> Stepping out there and saying it's not about you, it's about the one who sent you, right? All this getting up close reminds us that it's impossible to hate someone whose story you know. And I'll, I'll just acknowledge that there's a lot going on in the world, in the media, in social media, that is ripping us apart because we're not getting up close to see each other's faces and learn names and hear stories. And when you hear stories, it's impossible to hate that person. You just end up wanting to offer them healing and reconciliation in the name of Jesus. When people have learned our story, that we come in peace in the name of the Prince of Peace, they're incredulous because their unfortunate experience with the church has often been, you're the people who stand across the street with picket signs. And they'll say things like, thank you for putting down the signs, and thank you for crossing the street to be a sign, a sign of God's love. But thank you for daring to come up close to me. You know, we can tend to be kind of afraid of each other. When we get up close, we actually find ourselves hugging each other. And the hug is beautiful because it's, it's a hug in response to an offer of love. Yeah, my friend Casper was the first person who ever said that to me. I want to go to where you come from to meet the one who sent you. Casper knows Jesus. Amen. In all of this going forth, though, uh, we find this beautiful connection between offering the corporal works of mercy and the mission of evangelization. 
right? We often start with the feeding, the clothing, right? the visiting the sick. Uh, those are stepping stones. Because if we only do those things and don't talk about the one who sent us or offer a relationship with the one who sent us, then we're just doing social work, right? Um, so there's this beautiful connection uh, between corporal works of mercy and evangelization. And it, for me, it's been embodied in the name of a man who we can call Andy. And we met Andy uh, several months ago in an encampment, and he has horribly diseased feet that had been on the mend, but he didn't have any shoes. And he said, if you ever come across a pair of shoes, I need this size. I'm like, okay. And we found that pair of shoes for him. Now when we go back, Andy comes striding down the path. He feels like he has his life back. And now we can actually talk with Andy. And he's telling us stories about the Catholic churches. He grew up in eastern Washington, how he was an altar server. And we're just at a totally different level of sharing in fellowship. Right? The pair of shoes wasn't the real goal, but a practical need, corporal work, that allows him now to move about and remember childhood and share in the faith a little more freely. That's a stepping stone of the beauty between corporal works of mercy and evangelization. Right? Let's uh, feed someone food so that we can share in the feast of, of the one who, who loves us all. Right? So that's a little bit about this, preparing for encounter with Jesus. That's why we go forth, even when we're not ready. So the second piece, these instructions, there's really a key instruction that Jesus shares with his disciples and with all of us today. And the first step is to pray. You know, talk to the master of the harvest. And we remember beautifully that prayer isn't about being accurate on all of your specific words and making sure you have them all exactly memorized verbatim with the punctuation. Prayer is relationship. Prayer is submitting to the will of our Heavenly Father who creates us and providentially cares for us. Make sure we stay in relationship with the one who sent us before we decide to try to put together the practical pieces of going forth. That's the first step. Always stay in relationship with your loving God. The other instructions, I'll, I'll touch on them. Uh, he reminds us that we'll never be totally ready, but he sends us anyway. We will always be inadequate ourselves. He'll allow us to be humbled. But again, he's the one who providentially provides for the success of the mission. He says we'll go like lambs before wolves. Uh, it will be dangerous. Um, it is prudent to avoid unnecessary dangers. I'll, su I'll suggest that. Right? There will be dangers where we go. I've always thought, if I get killed proclaiming Jesus, what a way to go. So there's always that. Right? He does tell us to go in pairs, which has some practical reasons for it. Mutual support, encouragement, protection. Perhaps the most significant, he tells us to proclaim peace when we show up someplace and not to take it personally if someone rejects it, right? Because to utter the word peace, you as a member of the body of Christ, is to proclaim Jesus himself. You might want to consider, how are you at least quietly proclaiming peace where you're showing up? That place of pain that you might be called to, how is it that you just simply say, hi, peace? I mean, that's, a, that's an acceptable word you can offer to someone you show up and meet. Because the theme of peace is directly related to salvation, and Jesus is the salvation of God. Uh, maybe a little word about this greeting no one along the way. Uh, he's not saying be a jerk and ignore people. You can still be cordial. This is more of a reference to things that could inadvertently distract us or dissuade us from our mission. The ancient ritual of hospitality might require a traveler to accept hospitality and be waylaid for a day or more in someone's house. So you can still be nice, uh, but don't let other little social engagements maybe take you away from where you really need to go. What's that place of pain where God is sending you, even if you don't feel like you're ready? Right? So a quick thought about failure and what it is we're supposed to rejoice in. I mentioned before that not everyone will respond favorably to our offer of good works in the name of Jesus. Who sent you? Jesus. Hmm. Okay. 
don't take it personally, right? The peace will come back to you. Uh, the biggest thing is to recognize to not be tempted to anger or revenge or trying to persist in something that's not going to bear fruit. Maybe you'll actually do more harm to the name of Jesus by persisting uh, inappropriately. Right? That shaking of dust from your feet is not a sign of condemnation, but it's just a sign that we're now going to disassociate and we'll move on to somewhere else. We'll keep scattering the seed somewhere else. Not really failure if you're faithfully offering. And a thought about rejoicing. I think you heard it. Jesus says, uh, don't rejoice because uh, the spirits are subject to my name. Rejoice because you are living in relationship with me. Your names are written in heaven. That's the thing to rejoice in because that's the thing we're also offering to others. So brothers and sisters, indeed, let us rejoice. Let us boast only in the cross of Jesus by which he saves us and offers all people eternal life. Let's keep going somewhere to places of pain, even if we don't think we're ready, so we can affirm dignity, remind people they're loved, they're worthy of healing, reconciliation, and freedom, so much so that people who were just moments prior strangers to us will be prompted to ask, who sent you? I would like to meet them. And we could simply introduce them to Jesus.